Today we're going to be looking at how to change the strings on a Gibson type guitar. So this is a Gibson Les Paul and it has the classic tailpiece, tunematic bridge and three machine heads either side of the headstock. And there are many models of guitar from various manufacturers that follow a very similar design to this guitar. We're going to be looking at three different ways of attaching the strings to the bridge. Here we have the strings going straight through, which is the traditional way of doing it. And here we have what's called a top wrap where the string goes through this way, you pull the string around, goes over and then you attach it as normal. If your guitar is strung using the top wrap method, then when you restring it, I would use the same method and just go around the same way. If your guitar is not top wrapped, which most of them probably won't be, then don't top wrap it. And the third bridge type we're looking at, this is a PRS 594, which is PRS's version of the Les Paul. Here we have a very similar to the Gibson Tunematic bridge and a slightly different variation on the tailpiece. We're looking at standard machine heads, Grover type locking machine heads, which have this thumb screw on the back, and PRS machine heads, which have this thumb screw on the front. Things you're going to need, a new set of strings, some wire cutters, some kind of guitar tuning device, and then optional items, string winder, which makes it a bit easier to wind the strings on. I'm using some Jim Dunlop lemon oil, to clean the fretboard if you want to clean your guitar. And I'm using some Jim Dunlop spray wax to polish the body of the guitar. So now we're going to remove the old strings. If you play a string, turn the machine head, turn this one clockwise, you can hear it's getting lower. Now I'm just going to loosen those. You can do it by hand. If you have a string winder, it's quicker. And when you get to the GBE strings, you turn them the opposite way to loosen them. This guitar has the Grover style locking machine head, so I need to loosen these thumb screws by hand. Don't use any tools for this, just do it by hand. Just loosening that. What that does, that releases the clamp in the string post and allows you to remove the string. This PRS 594 has the PRS style locking machine heads. So we're going to do the same thing, loosen the string. These thumb screws on the top just turn them by hand, anti-clockwise. That's going to release the clamp on the post. This guitar doesn't have locking machine heads, so if I loosen the strings as normal, now we can safely cut the strings. Remove them from the machine heads. With this top wrapped guitar, there's actually an extra ball end on the string which we're going to keep. And the reason for this is when you wrap the strings around, sometimes you get a little sharp piece of the string just here, which some people find is irritating for their hand. So what you can do is you can take these extra ball ends from the string and use them as spacers. So you can add extra ball ends. You just put the string through the hole in the ball end, like so. And that means the string sits slightly differently and you can use it to adjust where the sharp bit of the string sits. So when we take these off, we're just going to keep the ball end. And if you want a few spares, you can just take your wire cutters and then we have another one. So we're just going to remove the rest of these, keeping the ball ends. This end, I'm going to remove the tailpiece. On this PRS 594, the tailpiece is screwed down. You can't just lift it off, so we're just going to leave that there. We're not going to touch that. Make a note of which side the screws are on your bridge. This one has the screws facing the headstock. On some guitars, they may be facing the opposite way. And if we do take the, the bridge off, we make sure we put it back on the same way around. I'm gonna keep the bridge off of this guitar for now because I want to clean it and it's a bit easier to clean without the bridge and the tailpiece on the way. Be very careful with these screws here. Don't turn them. You want it to stay exactly where they are. The next thing we're going to do is clean the guitar. If you don't want to clean the guitar, you can skip this step. I'm going to use Jim Dunlop spray wax for everything apart from the fretboard. So just spray the wax on a cloth. Don't spray it on the guitar, because it will go everywhere. Just be careful around these screws that held the tailpiece and bridge on. When you get to those screws, hold them with your finger just to make sure they don't move. Be really careful around them. We don't want to change any of these settings. Don't forget to clean your bridge and tailpiece, make them nice and shiny. 
Once we've applied the polish to the guitar, we now need to polish it off. So we're just gonna use the other side of the cloth, polish the whole guitar, not the fretboard. Once we've polished the guitar, we're going to use the Jim Dunlop Lemon Oil on the fretboard. This one comes in an applicator bottle, it has a little piece of felt on the top there, so I can just knock that on, like so. And I'm trying to cover the, the space between every fret. Get right into the corners, you can go onto the frets if you want. We're going to wipe it off again. What this is going to do is it's going to break down all the dirt and grease and dead skin and all the horrible stuff that sticks to your fretboard. And when we clean it off, some of it's going to remain and that will condition your fretboard and stop it from drying out. So fretboards, if they dry out too much, they can crack. Once we've applied the lemon oil to the fretboard, we're now going to clean it off using a separate cloth, not one that's covered in guitar polish. And just get right into the corners by the frets with your nails. So we're going to go all the way along, just sort of rubbing this in. We continue to break down that dirt, remove the dirt, condition the fretboard. Once you've gone all the way along, just wipe off any excess with the cloth. The next thing we're going to look at is attaching the strings at the bridge. So depending which strings you have, they may be color coded or they may be labeled in another way. These are only ball strings and each string has a number corresponding to the gauge of the string. 10 is the high E string, the thinnest E string. 46 is the thick E string, the low E string. And each string comes in its own packet. So you just need to match up the number on the packet to the number of the string you want. Now I'm going to put the bridge back on, making sure the screws are pointing the same direction they were when I removed it. So this guitar, the screws are pointing towards the headstock, so I'm making sure they're pointing towards the headstock now. If yours are pointing the other way, then put it on the other way. So with the tailpiece, I'm actually going to thread the strings through first and then put the tailpiece on the guitar. Just thread them all through like that making sure to put them in the correct order, E, A, D, G, B, E. Now we have all six strings attached to the tailpiece. We can slot it onto the posts. If I move this guitar now, the tailpiece is probably going to fall off. So we really need to get one of these strings attached to the headstock as soon as possible. This tailpiece has got a couple of little clips here, which means when I put it on, it can't fall off, which is quite a nice little feature. For the top right, we're going to go straight through this side of the tailpiece. And if your strings had a spare ball end on there for a spacer, put that back on. You can always experiment with these adding and removing extra ball ends. You can put more than one on each string to space this, this, the windings of the string out. It's a little sharp bit of the string here. And if it sits in an awkward place, it can be uncomfortable for your hand. I would just restring your guitar the way that it was strung before. So if you had extra ball ends, put them on. If you didn't, don't. If you're finding the strings are scratching your hands, experiment and try putting some ball, extra ball ends on there. And then we just wrap over the top of the bridge like that. And then string the guitar as normal. This is a PRS 594. It's got the sort of fixed tail piece that doesn't come off so easily as it does on a Gibson. There's a slot here, the string just goes through that slot and then you pull the ball end into the hole like so. If your guitar has regular machine heads or non-locking machine heads like this guitar, then all we need to do is pull the string through the post all the way, measure up one machine head, come back, put a little bend in the string to mark it, and what you do now is that one over, one under. So we take the string, we wrap it over the machine head first of all, like so. Then we wind it on, making sure to wind this anti-clockwise. 
and then the second wind is going to go under the string. So we've got the string going through the post. The first wrap we did was above the post. The second one is below and it creates a little lock. Now I've got a bit of tension in the string here. Just make sure the string is sitting in the correct nut slot in the correct bridge slot. And then we can tighten it up. Keep your finger here. What that's going to do is make sure the string winds from the bottom up. It's going to create a nice tight lock. Notice the winding here. The string is on the inside of the post facing towards the inside of the headstock. That's the way it needs to be. If you've got it on the other side, it's the wrong way. You need to start, get, start that string again. All of these steps are reversible. So if you mess something up, just loosen the string, take it off and put it back on again. Now on the other side of the headstock, we wrap the other way and we tighten the other way. So okay, it's lining that hole up. Put through. So again, I'm imagining there's another machine head here. Pull that back, little bend in the string. And now this time I'm gonna wrap it towards the center of the headstock. So instead of going this way, like I did with the other three, I'm gonna go the opposite way. So lift that up wrap over the top, hold it there, my finger. Now, I'm also winding the string the other way. So I'm going clockwise, tighten the string. Making sure the string is sitting in the correct nut slot, the correct bridge slot. Lots of things for the string to get stuck on when you're tightening it up, like the uh, the selector switch, you know, all sorts of parts of the guitar. So just be careful when you're tightening it up, make sure it's not attached to anything it shouldn't be. This guitar has locking Grover machine heads. So what I'm gonna do is push that string through the post. I'm not gonna turn the guitar around and show you what I'm doing just now because I don't want the tailpiece to fall off. But I'm gonna pull this all the way through. I'm tightening the thumb screw on the back. Now that is now attached. What I'm now gonna do is just tune this so it sounds something like an E. My tailpiece is no longer gonna fall off because this string is holding it on. So now I can flip that around and just show you the other side. So all we do when we put the string through is just tighten this thumb screw. Do it by hand. You can do it as tight as you like with your hand. But don't, you don't need to use any pliers or anything like that. If you do, you'll damage them. Just do it by hand. This PRS 594 has a different type of locking machine head. So what we do, we turn the post around so that the hole is pointing towards the relevant nut slot for that string. Pull the string all the way through, making sure it's sitting in the bridge correctly. Then once you've pulled that through, just tighten this thumb screw by hand. Do as tight as you can by hand. Don't use any tools on it, you don't need to. There is a little slot here if you want to. You can put a coin in, but I really don't think it's necessary. PRS recommend doing it by hand. Once you've attached that string, Need to tighten it anti-clockwise. When you tighten these strings, if you're not sure how much to tighten it, just use a tuner. So now we have all the strings on. We need to tune the guitar to pitch. I'm using a clip-on tuner. You can use any kind of tuning method you like. When you're tuning a string, always tune up to pitch. So this is slightly flat. So I'm gonna go up to E. Now, if I go too high, it's now F. If I then just tune down to E, there's a good chance that string is going to slip a bit. So what you need to do, if your string is sharp, is tune down below the pitch and tune up. This is going to help to lock the string in position. So now we have the guitar in tune, we need to stretch the strings in. We tune the string to pitch, pull the string away from the body hard as you dare, that string slipped to D sharp. Again, slipped a little bit. Again. Again. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna keep stretching this string until when we tune it to pitch, we stretch it again, it doesn't slip anymore. So it's slipping less and less each time. One more string, A string, 
Slip to G sharp. Okay, so I'm just grabbing that string, pulling it. And then I'm going to go through every single string to the same method. The last step is just to trim off any excess string. I normally leave about five millimeters of string. You just have to be careful. Don't cut the wrong part of the string. Otherwise you have to put another one on. I hope you found this video useful and I hope you managed to change the strings on your Gibson style guitar.